friends, uh, good day. Uh, today on this video uh, we will be discussing uh, the go around and uh, we will be focused particularly on the automatic go around. Uh, in Boeing 737 we can make uh, two different go around. One is automatic go around and another go around is manual go around. So automatic go around, what does it mean? It means that uh, all the go-around procedure uh, will be performed automatically. The difference between what is the missed approach and what is the go-around or ball landing procedure will be discussed in another lesson. So today we are discussing. Uh, we will uh, we will let's uh, talk about generally go-around procedure. Uh, go-around automatic go-around procedure occurs or flight crews in real life used automatic go around during all visibility procedures. What does it mean? It means that the visibility at your airport uh, drops uh, below particular minima and you are using low, uh, low visibility procedures only for precision approaches. So that means that for ILS approaches or GLS approaches. And uh, low visibility procedures are related uh, to the conditions when uh, uh, your minimum RVR on the airport uh, should be uh, should be uh, 200 meters and your decision altitude is the radio altitude because you are so close to the ground that you need to, to have the information from your radio altimeter uh, uh, let's say uh, it measures from your wheelbase uh, to the ground uh, radio altitude because if you are using uh, barrel altitude uh, it's not so accurate uh, that means that we are using radio altitudes uh, now I stop talking a little bit about it and uh, I will discuss uh, the difference between category 3 and category 3A and category 3B approach the difference is that if we are using CAT 3B approach, we have basically no uh, no decision altitude. That means uh, that we have fail operational system on board. What does it mean? It means that if we are uh, if if we have some trouble, if we have some problems, the airplane will uh, very simple uh, says the airplane will. Um, can handle with this situation without any warning and uh, and the uh, airplane will automatically do the uh, do the landing for you but the most of the 737s uh, are equipped with uh, fail passive system uh, it means that if something happens we must execute the go around so for example uh, you are performing low visibility approach and uh, during this approach uh, suddenly you lose one engine so you have to perform the go around uh, because uh, you don't have the automatic uh, auto land capability is not working anymore uh, regarding to the automatic go around it is always related to the uh, to the approach which is coupled by autopilot A engage and autopilot B engage. I will not go uh, deep into the details uh, but basically what we need to have uh, for our automatic go around. Uh, low visibility procedures must be in force unless we are making training cut, uh, automatic go arounds so training cut 2 uh, or cut 3A approach and uh, and your airplane should contain with a mail um, uh, restriction uh, there shouldn't be written a cut only uh, cut one only approach so what uh, the automatic go around approach means it means uh, that the approach the go around procedure is fully automated for you and uh, the sequence is uh, at the decision altitude which for, for our case we are going to perform automatic go around at Prague airport uh, it means that uh, in decision altitude uh, we press the toga button we have automatic go around trust and uh, 
airplane uh, starts uh, uh, starts climb uh, when positive rate we put the gear up uh, we put the desired at 400 feet we put the desired heading select mode so L nav or heading select at 800 feet uh, so this is the, our acceleration altitude so Prague airport has the elevation of 1200 so approximately at 2000 feet we will start the accelerate the airplane with the flap scheduled and the flap scheduled is because uh, most of the automatic uh, approaches or let's say uh, LV approaches uh, uh, we are using flaps 40 because the airplane has uh, with automatic landing uh, better, better, better flare conditions so now uh, we have pre-selected uh, just for you uh, to make sure that the ILS frequent uh, ILS courses on MCPs are set, which is 241, 241 for Prague Airport. Now setting 109 or decimal one, we have preset and um, radio minimums 500 uh, uh, 50 feet is set. We have auto brake two and the flaps 40 for the la for the landing. Uh, so uh, let's go and we will try to make uh, some automatic uh, approach and execute the automatic go around procedure. Uh, there are uh, thousands of things among uh, these low visibility procedures, for example, in your 80s message uh, it should be stated that low visibility procedures are in force. Uh, you need to have certain uh, systems of the airplane uh, serviceable, uh, so it's working. Uh, for example, if you have uh, failure with uh, Autopilot B, you cannot perform the landing, uh, and uh, and many of things, which is going uh, during uh, during automatic uh, landing, and as well for our go around. Uh, in my case, I will leave the APU on uh, because if something happens, I can easily uh, couple. Uh, put APU on the particular side on bus and I can do the go around or go to the category 1 minima approach and try to see if we are able to land if we, if we can see the runway or no uh, here in Microsoft Flight Simulator um, I cannot uh, set the minima for category 3 approach so I will put just the clouds over there so uh, we can see the runway within 50 feet, but anyway, we will execute the go around. So the correct procedure is, uh, as I said before, uh, f for automatic landing and automatic go around, uh, we should have a precision approach. That means uh, ILS approach or GLS approach in order to perform uh, this type uh, of uh, landing and go around procedure. And on pilot monitoring side, we have always uh, approach mode on navigation display just to ensure that we are exactly on the center line uh, with the localizer course and we are we are exactly on the glide slope uh, within uh, within our glide slope uh, within our glide slope uh, antenna position. So. Uh, Anyway, uh, we are approaching to our final approach fix, which is approximately 20 nautical miles. Uh, yeah, in real life, we catch the localizer course. Uh, we test it. Uh, it was approximately 24 nautical miles before the airport. Uh, when you are perform low visibility approach, uh, always uh, try to be stabilized with your airplane as soon as possible that means no continuous descent technique 
or whatever and uh, uh, in order to just to avoid uh, some mess and some tricky situations uh, it's not a shame to be stabilized uh, much sooner uh, that uh, you should be uh, in real conditions and do not hesitate the level aircraft before your final approach point so we will see if we catch the glide so we are, we are far away from the airport uh, we are 23 nautical miles so on I think we will catch the localizer course. So, once again, the correct procedure is press to go button, when positive rate, gear up, and fl put flaps to flaps 15, uh, at 400 feet put the, uh, to put the roll mode, and at uh, 800 feet above the ground level, which is 2000 feet in our case, uh, start to accelerate the airplane with the flaps casual. So we will go from, from flaps 15 to flaps 5, from flaps 5 to flaps 1 and from flaps 1 to flaps up. So I will start decelerate a little bit sooner because in real life when low visibility procedures are in force also the spacing uh, between each airplane uh, will be much higher than in normal conditions. Okay, so put flaps 5. Now we may decelerate. As I said before, remember during automatic landing in the low visibility procedures uh, try to be stabilized as soon as possible it's just for your comfort uh, if you can see my video flying to Samos airport uh, this is uh, this is the the same procedure is applicable because Samos airport is quite tricky and challenge so in this type of airport, like Samos, Innsbruck, try to be stabilized as soon as possible and this is valid also for low visibility procedures when we are performing automatic landing and automatic go around. We will see how it handle uh, PMDG with automatic go around. As soon as we can see the glide slope is alive so we put gear down, flaps 15, as, and as we catch the glide slope, uh, we put our final flap settings. So, we have the approach mode armed. And we have 5 miles to go to final approach fix. And in another video I will discuss uh, what is what is the difference uh, between missed approach procedure and bulk landing procedure and why are we using these procedures or when uh, is this procedure specified on the particular airport and why is it important to know the difference between these two procedures. Ok, so glide slope is alive, so put gear down, flaps 15. Arm the speed brakes. Start switches to continuous, do not forget to put it. As you are entering the clouds, always ensure uh, if you are going to use the engine anti-ice or no. So watch the temperature.
So, missed approach heading is set. This is very important. So, 241 for Prague. And go around altitude. So, missed approach altitude, sorry, will be 4000 feet. And 4000 feet we have pre selected. So, we have glide slope captured, single channel. That means we can couple the autopilot B engaged and put our final flap settings. We are going to have flaps 40, so we are not going directly, but just flaps 25 and then flaps 40. Uh, and our approach speed will be 130 because we have it's one, uh, 125 for flaps 40. So now we start carefully monitoring what we are going to do. Uh, we should have some uh, FMA indications uh, for this type of, ap of approach. So we have the flare arm com command, flare armed. And the lim uh, as I go back, the limitations for the couple autopilot B is up to 800 feet array unless you are not anymore allowed to perf perform the auto land. Approximately at 400 feet, uh, in order to be precise, at 360 feet RA, the, the airplane should a little bit start to trimming uh, to the tail in order to make proper fire conditions. So, flaps 40. I forget to put it there. Okay, so now we have flaps 40. And remember, uh, during uh, and during low visibility procedure, automatic landing and automatic go around, the things are really go very quickly. And the 50 feet decision uh, height is uh, it's very close to the terrain, so your height loss uh, should be uh, like that. Sometimes it could happen that you touch. The, the with the wheel wells the surface of the particular runway be aware of this fact so we have command flare armed so one indication is uh, filled and we are carefully watching uh, our radio altimeter as you can see we can see basically nothing and our temperature is plus 15 so uh, disregard the engine anti-ice for this time and always ensure however you are on the glide slope you have you have correct QNH settings uh, in order to not mess uh, just for a situational awareness and do not mess it uh, with wrong QNH and wrong altitudes. Uh, it's not so important. The most important is radio altimeter. Uh, but we are we are going uh, we are going to be much closer to the airport. So I will prepare my hand on the on the toga button, uh, toga button is basically here, uh, but I don't have the bind it, so approaching minimums 100. Okay, minimums go around 30 flaps 15, positive rate of climb, gear up. 400 feet, put the heading select. And as we have 2000 feet, we put the flaps 5. You see the speed bug is working for us. At flaps 5, put flaps 1. And I will put vertical speed. 
because we are close to the ground altitude at flaps 1 speed put flaps up Okay, and we will do after landing procedure. We stow the speed brakes back, put the landing gear up and off, and perform uh, after take of checklist once again. So, uh, this was the automatic go around procedure.